Hey guys, this is Shine from Simplex. Today we are covering Rise of the Tomb Raider inside out completely. This video is about the performance of the graphic cards in the market. And we are going to cover all the top tier graphic cards of Nvidia and the top tier graphic cards of AMD. By top tier, I don't mean the 980 Ti. I mean, you know, the 900 series more or less completely and the AMD, the latest 300 series and the Fury more or less all the graphic cards. So stay tuned for the benchmarks. Let the intros roll. So first up, I will go through the system specifications on which this game was tested. The CPU is a Core i7-4790K. The motherboard is an Asus Maximus 7 Hero. The RAM that this system is equipped with is 16 gigs of G-Skill Trident X, 2400 MHz. Moving on, firstly the 1920 into 1080 benchmarks. The settings that we used was very high details with pure hair on and HBAO+. The 980 Ti does pretty well, but as you can see from the scores, Nvidia has a lead in this set of benchmarks because of the Gameworks features that were used and AMD needs a bit of catching up to do because their drivers are outdated. Nvidia launched a day zero game ready 361.75 WHQL drivers. AMD did not do anything like that. Next, the 1440p or the 2560 into 1440 resolution benchmarks. Now, over here, we again see the difference between the two sides. The 980 Ti remains the king of the hill with very very high scores and it's nearly 60 fps but the 980 and the 970 are in late 30s and 970 is in early 30s but you can see the 980 and 970 is very close by but everything else in the nvidia lineup is pretty disappointing and i guess 960s and 950s weren't built to play in 2560 and 1440. in the amd side even the fury x comes up with a palsy 40 fps that, that's too low i feel and amd should do something about it the 390X, 390 and the 380X similarly show disappointing performance. But I feel 390X and 390 did better than they did in the 1080p section. Now that was because of the 8GB of frame buffer these graphic cards are outfitted with. And Rise of the Tomb Raider is pretty VRAM hungry. And this will be further stressed on in the next section. Moving on to the 3140 and 2160 resolution benchmarks. Again, we see the 980 Ti did very, very well. But this time, the 980, 970, 960 and 950 are outclassed by their AMD counterparts. The Fury X does 22, which is nowhere close to the 980 Ti's performance, but it's okay. On the other hand, the 390X and the 390 does better than the 980 and the 970 in this case. And the 380X is, as usual, somewhere between the 970 and the 960. But does it make much of a difference because at the end of the day it's just 20 fps and 18 fps and anything below 30 fps is absolutely unplayable guys actually 60 fps is what i prefer so i guess no single graphic card can handle rise of the tomb raider on its own you need an sli config to handle rise of the tomb raider in 4k with all its glories and eye candies turned on on that note guys we can see that nvidia has surpassed AMD because of again it's Gameworks or Gimpworks or whatever people like to call it. But I feel Rise of the Tomb Raider overall is a pretty good port. We have to keep in mind that the next gen consoles or right now the current gen consoles the Xbox One and the PS4 are outfitted with 8 gigs of VRAM. So yes, Rise of the Tomb Raider is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm expecting most of the games in this year and the following years to use a lot of VRAM. Hopefully, the next generation graphic cards keep that in mind and have more, much more than just 4 gigs of VRAM that most graphic cards are outfitted with these days. On that note guys, over and out.